What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving deep into one of the most talked about suspension setups in the Toyota or 4x4 world, the Dobinson's MRRs. Whether you're chasing comfort, control, capability, this kit promises a lot, but does it deliver? Well, today we're gonna talk about what I love and dislike about the MRRs. I'm gonna explain how they work. We're gonna go over the installation process, all the options and how to make adjustments or tune them for your vehicle. And hopefully by the end of this video, you should have a good idea if this suspension is right for you. All right, the MRR or Monotube Remote Reservoir Shock is Dobinson's premier suspension setup. It's a fully adjustable shock system with three-way adjustability, meaning you can fine tune your compression damping, both high and low speed, and rebound damping. I will explain what this means, but basically this is race level tuning on a touring rig. Now, why did I choose the MRRs for my Toyota? Well, so far I have ran the Old Man Emu Nitro Chargers and the Bilstein 5100s, and now I've moved on to the Dobinson's MRRs. The Old Man Emu and Bilsteins just didn't cut it for my build any longer and I'll explain why. I have added a lot of weight to my 4Runner behind me and originally I thought to myself, okay, more weight simply means just add you know, a heavier coil to compensate and I should be good. Well, I was wrong and the vehicle just didn't handle right. I suffered from bucking, bouncing and shock top out. When you add more weight and a heavier coil spring, you need adjustable shocks, especially for the rebound damping adjustment. When you go over bumps, you now have a much heavier coil that can essentially overpower your shock's rebound damping ability. And a much heavier vehicle can overpower the compression damping of the shocks. So let's talk about the different adjustments so this makes more sense. The Dobinson's MRRs are nice because they have three-way adjustability for high and slow speed compression damping and rebound damping. They also offer a bunch of different coil options depending on your vehicle's weight. This is nice because as you upgrade and add weight to your vehicle, you can buy different coils and make adjustments or tune the shocks as needed. Let's first talk about rebound damping as this was a game changer for me. The rebound damping controls how fast or slow a shock returns to its normal extended position after being compressed. Returning to its extended position allows it to be in the ready state to take the next compression or hit. Rebound forces on the shock are determined by energy that's basically stored inside the vehicle spring after compression. If you have a higher spring rate or heavier coil, like I do, you will want more rebound damping to fight the higher spring weight or rebound force placed on the shock as it extends back out. If you are doing very fast driving on rough terrain, you want the shocks to be able to return to its extended position faster, or you'll end up with your suspension packing higher up with each consecutive hit. This can have a huge influence on your traction and handling. Imagine driving down a washboard road and your rebound damping is too slow. Your suspension won't rebound fast enough to keep in contact with the ground, especially as you corner. If you have your damping set too soft, you can experience bucking or bouncing as your shock extends out too fast. Just think of a pogo stick. This is what was happening to me with the Bilsteins and Old Man Emus as the coil's rebound forces outpowered the shock's rebound damping ability. The MRRs also have high speed compression damping. So by adjusting this, you are adjusting the resistance to the compression stroke during high speed compressions. So fast trails, washboard, sudden impacts can be dampened more or less. If you have a heavier vehicle and notice you're bottoming out easily, you can increase this to stiffen up the suspension and prevent bottoming out. The MRRs also have slow compression damping, so adjusting this setting will affect how tight the shocks feel with slow compressions. This is noticeable in your steering response when cornering, initial sway around corners, and braking or nosedive. Having this dialed back will make for you know, a more floaty kind of Cadillac-like driving experience in town, but you may notice a you know, poor steering response, sway, and brake dive. So let's go over how to make adjustments. So the way that you adjust the high and low speed compression damping is identical for both the front and back of the vehicle. What you'll want to do is turn the dials all the way counterclockwise until it stops for both the low and high speed compression damping. Once you've turned it as far as it can go, you are now at zero and you can start to count the clicks inwards as you turn it to the right, basically firming up the shocks. So for low speed compression damping, you will have 20 clicks of adjustment and for high speed, you'll have 10 clicks of adjustment. All right, so moving on to rebound damping. To adjust the rebound damping on the rear, what you'll do is raise up this little boot at the bottom and this will expose a screw. Now you can use the included tool or a flathead screwdriver to adjust this and it's exactly the same as the compression damping. Basically turn it counterclockwise until it stops and then you'll count the clicks inwards. You'll have 15 clicks of rebound damping adjustment. 
turning it clockwise will essentially slow down the rebound or add more rebound damping, whereas turning it counterclockwise will make the shocks rebound faster or reduce the rebound damping. For the fronts, it's exactly the same concept as the rear. You're going to turn it counterclockwise till it stops and then count the clicks clockwise. You'll have 15 clicks of adjustment and six clicks per full rotation. All right, so what I don't like about these shocks is that it can take a bit of time to tune or find the right settings for your vehicle weight or you know coil choice with the MRRs. If your vehicle is stock and will remain stock, the IMS shocks might be the best choice as it is designed for a factory vehicle. But if you ever want to add armor, bumpers, winch, rooftop tent, you'll want to upgrade to the MRRs. So the MRRs are kind of a one size fits all shock they are sort of a shock you can basically grow into. So I do like that over time I can make adjustments as my vehicle's configuration and driving conditions change. Dobinsons provides all the adjustment info in the pamphlet and also provides space for you to write down your ideal settings. Basically, you just count the number of clicks and write them down in that pamphlet. I plan to tow an off-road trailer soon, so I will likely increase the compression damping on the back to help with that extra weight. All right, the installation. Okay, I want to provide you with the important info on the installation without going through the whole step-by-step -step process. There are a lot of suspension install videos out there, but I'll tell you what you need to know for the Dobinsons. When you order these shocks online, you will have some options. So pick what coils you want, what shocks you want, the long, travel, or normal. My suggestion is to tick front strut top hats and front strut assembly option by Dobinsons. It will cost you some money, but you will get new top strut caps and you won't need to mess with a spring compressor or remove the rebound adjustment knob. These aren't like other shocks and that rebound adjustment knob needs to be removed to get the strut cap on. It's finicky and takes time and patience to remove and reinstall correctly. Also, most spring compressors will likely damage the adjustable coilover threads. Another thing to note is the process for installing the reservoir with the included parts is a bit of a pain in the butt. There are options online that can actually save you some time, so let me explain. Purchasing aftermarket reservoir holders such as these may save you quite a bit of time as the Dobinsons require a few extra steps that are a bit of a pain as you have to feed captive nuts into the frame to mount the reservoir holders. Also, if you do not have Dobinsons assembled as struts, you'll need to remove the rebound damping adjuster while taking caution to not lose the small ball bearing that is spring loaded. I'm doing it over a bull while pinching the sides. Once it is out, you can now put an Allen key into the strut to tighten the cap on. After the cap is on, you will want to feed the adjuster back in while pinching that bearing into the spring loaded channel. Tighten it fully clockwise and a half a turn back. You can now assemble the rebound adjuster knob to the top, making sure it lines up with the internal adjuster. Another thing you may need to do is remove these nuts that are basically tack welded onto the body. They aren't being used for anything. What I did is I just used vice grips, grabbed onto it, bent it back and forth until it popped off. Then I used a crowbar just to push it up a bit. I don't really know if I really had to remove this, but it did make installation maybe a little bit easier. So these are the captive nuts that you'll need to feed into the frame. There will be two plastic caps on the front on each side that you'll have to pop out and then feed these in. Now they are a bit of a pain in the butt to get them to line up perfectly to get the bolt on. So make sure you have a magnetic wand because they can fall into the frame and they're a pain in the butt to fish out if you do not have the magnetic wand. This is the reason why you may want to get those aftermarket reservoir holders. The correct routing for the reservoir hose is shown here. It kind of comes up from the bottom, goes over the shock tower, all within the upper control arm. For the driver's side to get the reservoir on, you're gonna to need to remove the mount for this uh, HVAC line. Basically take this mount off, flatten it up, flip it around so it pushes the HVAC line in towards the vehicle and then remount it. And then you'll wanna pull on the bracket that actually holds the reservoir more towards the wheel. So my ride height was a bit higher than I wanted. I had too much preload on the coil, so I had to back off on it a bit. Now, they were installed, so what I did is I used a cheater bar with the included tool and I was able to make those adjustments. All right, so using the included Dobinsons reservoir mounts, I had to actually cut a little bit of the body out to fit these mounts. I also had to use those captive nuts and feed them into the frame to mount it properly. So here's another reason why you might want to pick up those aftermarket mounts. On the passenger rear, you'll have to feed the captive nut in through this location to mount the reservoir. You'll also need to mount your reservoir hose using the included Dobinsons hose mounts. 
For the driver's side, you'll need to remove this mud guard. It is a huge pain in the butt. These little clips do not come off easy. You actually have to push in the edges of them instead of kind of in the middle in order to release them. You'll want to clean out this M8125 threaded hole here. Mine was full of gunk and dirt. I had to use WD-40 and kind of clean out those threads. Then I ran a bolt into it just to kind of clear out the rest of the rust. Eventually, I was able to get that mount on. All right, I think that concludes the extra steps that you need to take to install these shocks. All right, so the MRRs have absolutely transformed my rig. I have noticed a smoother ride when going fast down rough trails and logging roads. I've also noticed much better articulation on both the front and rear. I haven't had any issues with the shocks build or quality. They do offer a two-year warranty and they're actually rebuildable. Dobbinson's doesn't specify how often you should rebuild them as everyone's driving habits will differ. They have however stated that they are designed to last just as long as their IMS shocks and I don't think those are rebuildable. I do love these shocks and I think that they are totally worth it. The reservoir mounts and rebound adjusters do make in install a bit of a pain but other than that everything else went smoothly all right guys i hope you found this video useful if you did please like and subscribe and i hope to see you guys in the next one bye now